Hello, this is Gene Kupfer, Senior Manager, Customer Success and Professional Services with Sentinel One. In this video, I would like to go over administrative functions of threat analysis, handling, and exclusions. On a day-to-day -day basis, your SOC team should be monitoring the dashboard for any new alerts that are coming in, and they will appear in one of four categories, either active, mitigated, which are stopped during execution, blocked, which are stopped prior to execution, and suspicious based on your policy if you have suspicious set to detect only. You can further filter this list to a particular category by selecting it. If you click active, it'll show only active. If you click mitigated, only mitigated, and so on. The first thing you want to do is always research the active threats. You can see one here. Let's assume this one is some particular malware. You can see that no action has been taken on this threat yet. If there was, you would see an action icon like this one here, which is quarantine. What you want to do is click on more and then click on analyze. It'll take you to the forensics analysis page for that particular threat, where you will have further access to multiple actions to take on this threat, plus information about the machine, the user, the attack, certificate information, hash information, if available on any of those. You can further click this link to research in Google and in VirusTotal. You can see when it was identified and reported, how many times it was seen on the network, on which machines. You can look at all the connections that were attempted. These are outbound connections. It will show you locations on the global map, including IP addresses. You can look at the attack overview by severity. The storyline, which will show you everything that happened from start to finish. And a raw data report of all the information above here. Going back to the dashboard, another item that you want to pay close attention to is anything that comes up in suspicious. It could be an un a potentially unwanted program. It might be a zero day that is unknown, so it's coming up here because you have suspicious set to detect only. Since Sentinel-1 behavioral engine is very good at detecting zero-day threats, in the, in the situation where you have it set to protect, it would stop it. But if we have it set to detect only, it'll show up as an alert on the suspicious. So you want to make sure you investigate what's here. And if it is a malicious threat, take the appropriate action. Once you have handled a particular event, you no longer need to see it on your dashboard. You can click more, mark as resolved, and click continue. It will be removed from the dashboard. You can always access a history of your threats by clicking analyze, and the history will appear here, and you can do further research or look at the history as needed by searching here, downloading a CSV, and you can, fi and you can filter the, the way it searches either by threats, applications, or applications by agents. Finally, I would like to talk about another important aspect, and that's exclusions, which is located under settings, exclusions. Exclusions allow you to make exceptions to various applications so that Sentinel-1 does not take action on it. This is very useful in the event where you might have a homegrown application, compiling code on developer machines, or any situation where even an application update looking suspicious can kick off our detection engine. And you have an option to create a global exclusion or create a list. And a list can also be applied to a particular group of machines so that only those endpoints would have these exclusions. So let's use an example of developer machines. So you would create a new list called devs and click save. From here, I have choice of different type 
of exclusions. I can exclude by path, signer identity, file type, or browser. Once I click open on one of these, it'll present me with a menu for that item. If I change my mind here, I don't have to go back to the previous page. I can just change it here to the type of exclusion. I can also do that when I click new exclusion, I can change it here as well. So you have many options for changing your mind on what type of exclu exclusion this will be. So for a path, I would just select the, that it's a path, which OS, enter the path here. If I want to include subfolders, I would click this box, give it a description and click save. By default, it's in the devs list. If I want to do a signer identity, very similar, I select signer identity, which OS, and then I would enter the signer identity certificate ID here, description, click save. File type, again, you select the file type. This is only for Windows. And then I can select file type and as shown in the example, give it a description, click save. And finally, I can do an exclusion by a browser. Once I have my exclusion configured, I then have to apply it to a policy by going to settings policies under exclusions. I can select it under the drop down. And then the policy applies to a network group. Either edit an existing one and apply it here, or when creating a new group, you can apply the policy here. And that exclusion will apply to any machines in this group. So you would potentially have a group called devs with a policy called devs and the exclusion devs applies to that policy, which in turn applies to all the machines that belong to that group. Thank you.